many embedded systems require tasks to communicate with each other to perform complex functions. Let's start by looking at the different ways in which we can think about interprocess communication. Shared memory provides a common location that different processes can read and write. Of course, this requires cooperation to avoid destroying information in that shared location. Message passing sends messages between the processes along a communication channel, so there's no common address space. In shared memory, we can think of two processors on a bus, but we can also use shared memory to communicate between processes on a single bus. So CPU1 writes a value into memory, into the shared location. That location can then be read by CPU2. A common variation of shared memory is the mailbox. This is a shared location that's usually implemented as a register or a small amount of memory. The term mailbox is usually used for a small number of bits, and it's often implemented directly in hardware but it can also be implemented in software in the RTOS. In message passing, we have two CPUs on a bus. Once again, these can be two processes on the same CPU that communicate. CPU sends a message along the bus that's then received by CPU2. Concurrency makes programs much more complex and difficult to understand. We should expect that interprocess communication introduces the possibility of new types of bugs into our programs. A race condition is behavior that depends upon the relative timing of actions in the system. Race conditions are well known in hardware, but they also exist in software. As you can imagine, race conditions are extremely hard to debug because it's very difficult to reproduce the exact timing required to exhibit the bug. A race condition is behavior that depends upon the relative timing of actions in the system. Race conditions are well known in hardware, but they also exist in software. As you can imagine, race conditions are extremely hard to debug because it's very difficult to reproduce the exact timing required to exhibit the bug. Here's a simple example. We have two CPUs that use shared memory to communicate. The top location is a flag that tells each CPU whether it can write into the location. The bottom location is where the value is stored. So CPU1 reads the flag, sees it's a zero, so it decides I can write this location. Then CPU2 reads the flag, decides, oh, I can write this location too. But before CPU2 can do anything, CPU1 writes into the location. Then CPU2, not knowing that CPU1 has changed the flag, writes over that value and puts its own location and puts its own value into the shared memory. So now CPU1 thinks it's written a value into the memory, but that value is no longer there because CPU2 overwrote it. The problem in that example is that CPU1 had to independently test the flag and then perform its write. CPU2 had to do the same thing. So the way to solve the problem is with what's known as an atomic test and set operation. It's a single operation that reads a memory location, tests it, and then can write the location back. This allows us to change locations only when the flag is available. The ARM architecture provides a test and set mechanism using the swap or SWP instruction. So in this code, we load in the location of the semaphore. We then read that semaphore location in a loop. The get flag loop uses swap to exchange the current value of R1 with the contents of the semaphore location. If that value is not zero, it goes back and re-executes the loop. So this loop waits until the semaphore stored in memory is zero. And when it does become zero, it's exchanged that value for a one. 
so that the next process that tries to read the semaphore won't think that the semaphore is available. Let's look at interprocess communication mechanisms in a little more detail. We can build interprocess communication mechanisms that operate in either of two different ways. A blocking mechanism waits for a response before it allows the program to continue. A non-blocking mechanism allows the process to continue as soon as the communication has been performed. Each type of meaning may be useful in different situations. We often think of blocking communication as representing a critical region. A critical region is a section of code that cannot be interrupted by another process because that other process might, for instance, change a value in memory. So we often think of writing shared memory as a critical region or accessing the registers of an I.O. device as a critical region. We can build critical regions in code using a semaphore. This is an operating system primitive for controlling access. The traditional names for the semaphore are called P and V. These come from the Dutch terms for the flags that are used to control access to shared pieces of railroad track. So access to the beginning of the critical region is controlled with the P semaphore. The program that wants to use the critical region will execute P, which will not return until the critical region is available. The process can then continue working in the critical region. And when it's done with the critical region, it uses V to release the semaphore. Once the semaphore has been released, another process can perform a critical operation, for example, on the same shared variable. In this example, we have two tasks that are running concurrently. Task 1 asks for the semaphore. It receives it and it starts to execute its critical region. Slightly later, task 2 asks for the same semaphore, but the semaphore is already busy, so task 2 has to wait until task 1 releases the semaphore, at which point task 1 continues on its execution and task 2 can get the semaphore and perform its own critical region. Task 2 then needs to release the semaphore so that whichever task can use it again later. A useful form of non-blocking communication is the queue. Queues can be used to pass messages that will be received and operated on later. Here's an example of some code from the freertos.org operating system that implements a queue. The operating system itself manages the queue's behavior. A signal is a form of interprocess communication that's like an interrupt, but is performed in software. It changes the flow of control, but usually doesn't pass parameters. The control C command in Unix is, for example, a signal that kills a process. We can represent signals in UML. To summarize, shared memory and message passing are two styles of interprocess communication, but they're functionally equivalent. Concurrent communication can introduce new types of bugs, but we can use low-level mechanisms like atomic test and set to control them, and we can encapsulate these in higher-level primitives such as P and V.